All right, we're back everyone with Recipe for Adventure. We're on to chapter 14 and 15 today. They had just found that they have brought together the families, they have done the pizza contest, all these lovely things, but how are they going to get home? We'll have to find out. Chapter 14. Maybe we should go back to the Zapoli vendor, Amelia suggested, once they had turned the corner from Tatoria Floriano, where they just walked back in order to get their bearings. That's where it all started, right? Good idea, Alfie said. He remembered the way checking street signs and landmarks as he led them through the streets once again. Maybe we can use the money Signor Floriano gave us for helping out with the pizza to buy another Zapoli. Signor Floriano had insisted the Bertolis be paid for their help, and Alfie felt better at having a little local money in his pocket. Only if the vendor died doesn't chase us chase after us again, Amelia said. At least this time we have money. Anyway, maybe he won't recognize us, Alfie said, and he hoped he was right. He really didn't want to end this adventurous day by sitting in some jail cell with no way to call home, much less get home. It turned out they didn't need to worry about the Zapoli vendor. When they got to the street where they'd first arrived, the spot where his cart had been was empty. Now what? Amelia asked. Alfie didn't have a clue. How do you get back to where you were if you have no idea how you got where you are? Let's walk and think, Alfie said, hoping inspiration would hit. Alfie guided him them down the streets through Quarteri, Spangolia, past Piazza Martiri, and finally the tree-filled lawns of Villa Comuna, where they faced the Gulf of Naples. Maybe they should catch a boat somewhere, but where? Maybe, in reality, his parents really were here in Naples, or this was some sort of bizarre dream. He didn't believe that, even if he didn't know what happened or what to believe. He only knew today felt as real as any day he had back home. As much as he didn't want it to end, he knew he wanted to be in his home with his family, so they'd have to keep thinking. They spotted a lone vendor on the lawn of Villa Comuno, selling to couples and late night stragglers. Hoping to catch the sun setting into the sea, the smell of the fresh fish and something fried from the vendor sent his stomach rumbling despite the excellent pizza they had eaten not long ago. Want to get a snack? he asked his sister. Sure. They went to the vendor, a smiling old man with brown eyes that sparkled in the fading sun, who sold fried fish sandwiches wrapped in white paper. Squeeze of lemon? the vendor asked, holding up a lemon wedge. Alfie shrugged and said yes, and the vendor squeezed a little lemon juice over the sandwich. Let's sit close to the water on the wall over there, Alfie suggested, after they paid for their sandwiches. He led his sister carefully across Via Francisco Carcialio and up onto the wall, where they let their feet dangle over the edge of the wall. The cool, salty air blew across their faces as they bit into their fried fish sandwich. Oh my gosh, Alfie said, looking down at his food. I know, Amelia said. This is so good. It was crispy crust holding in the flaky white fish with zests of lemon, and homemade bread made it even more delicious. You remember that time, Alfie began. We went to the beach, and you were so scared to get in the water that Mom had to bring you a bucketful and let you dip your toe in so you'd know there was nothing to be afraid of. I wasn't afraid, Amelia said indignantly. I'd heard some other kids saying there might be jellyfish, and I just didn't want to get stung. Oh yeah, you made Dad promise you that there weren't any jellyfish before you'd go in. He said it was a jellyfish-free beach, and it was illegal for them to swim here, she said, smiling. And later that day, it was Dad who got stung, Alfie said, and they both laughed. He kept hopping he kept hopping around the beach, holding his leg out to strangers, going, It's a sting! What should I do? Mom was so embarrassed. I was so embarrassed, Amelia said. That was the trip I learned to body surf, Alfie said, looking out at the water. Do you think kids here in Italy body surf? He wondered. He took another bite into his sandwich, remembering how it felt to coast on the waves. That was the trip I totally beat you at Frisbee. You can't win at a game where no one keeps score, Alfie said. 
Amelia took another bite and said, There was that little shack on the beach that sold Cokes and glass bottles that you had to return for a refund, and the fish and chips. Those fish and chips, Alfie said, they were the best. Best ever, Amelia agreed. He sat quietly on the wall and remembered that trip, and how the fish and the chips tasted crispy and salty and so yummy after a long day in the sun, and how much they'd learned they'd laughed and played. Alfie remembered how his mom leaned back into Dad as they watched him and Amelia stuff their faces with the shack food. What beach bums, Dad had said. Alfie didn't realize he'd closed his eyes at the memory until something strange began to happen. Strange but familiar. A shift in the air. For a moment he felt he couldn't even open his eyes, but even so, everything around him felt different. Even smelled different. When he finally opened his eyes, everything had changed. It wasn't the Gulf of Naples he saw now. It was his great aunt Donatella smiling at him and his sister in the kitchen of their very own home. It had happened again, except now they were home. Zia Donatella, Alfie said, not quite believing all what had happened. Well, she said with a wink, what did you think? Chapter 15. You have to stop telling people, Amelia said to her brother on the walk home from school the next day. No one believes us. How could I not tell people I spent a day in Naples, Italy yesterday? Alfie said, surprised his sister would pass up on the opportunity to tell the entire school about their travels and adventures. Don't you want to tell your little friends about Enzo? Be quiet, she said, slugging him in the arm. Alfie pretended like he, like she socked him real hard. How did you think we... How do you think we can get back? He asked. He wanted to see Marcos again, taste more food and explore more twisting streets. We're still not sure how we got there in the first place, Amelia said. I'm not even sure if it really happened. You know it did, Alfie said as they walked up to their front door. And I know you want to go back just as much as I do. Maybe. I just wonder what's, what's that noise? Amelia asked as they shut the front door behind them. Is that mom and Zia? In the kitchen? No way, Alfie said. In the kitchen, they found their mom laughing as she sliced vegetables. Next to her was Zia Donatella shredding cheese in a box grater. Always with the grating, she said in mock anger. I could go buy the pre-grated pre -grated kind, mom said. She wiped the tears from her eyes. Pre-grated was all Zia Donatella could say to that, which made mom laugh even harder. What's going on? Alfie asked. Oh, hi, kids, mom said. Nothing, just dinner. She tossed the vegetable she had been slicing into the pan of hot oil. It crackled and sizzled, and she gave it a quick stir. You're making dinner? Amelia asked. As in cooking it? Don't tease your mother, Zia Donatella said. She's actually a very good cook. But she never cooks, Alfie said. She was always too busy with work, just like Dad. Hush, you kids, Mom said. You're making me look bad in front of Zia. Oh, you can stop grating the cheese. Mamma mia, my arm is about to fall off, Zia said. And they both fell into another fit of laughter. Dad came into the kitchen and looked as confused by the scene as Alfie and um, Emilio did. They're cooking, Alfie did, said deadpan. Dinner? Dad asked. This time, everyone laughed. What else would they be cooking? Mom and Zia made a feast of pasta with fresh vegetables for dinner, and everyone got to help. Amelia turned the regular butter into her butter, and Alfie sliced the warm ciabatta bread, fresh out of the oven. Dad made the salad with ingredients Zia Donatella set out for him. They all sat around the table together and dug into a meal which was hot and fresh and tasted better than any meal they had together at home. Having Zia Donatella there was like the freshly made whipped cream on top of a gelato they had been having for dessert. Something to make the night extra special. But as closely as they looked, Zia Donatella gave no hint of what had happened to Alfie and Amelia, if she knew about it or had anything to do with it. Even when prompted with questions like, Zia, does this food remind you of Naples? Of, like, going to Naples and walking around the cobblestone streets? Yeah, Zia, Alfie said. Like walking along Via Vici or going to the Mercato? Alfie, you've been staring at those maps too much, Dad said. He's got those streets memorized and everything. Alfie thought he saw Zia's eyebrows shoot up in acknowledgement, but it was so quick he couldn't be sure. 
After dessert, Alfie said, Mom, don't forget our school potluck tomorrow. We signed up for pizza, so we need to order in the morning. Alfie was actually sort of curious to eat delivered pizza now that he had the freshest handmade pizzas in April. Would he still love Presto Pesto? Order? Mom said, we're not ordering anything. We're making it. Do we have tomatoes, fresh mozzarella, and basil? Alfie asked. Since when do you know about making pizzas from scratch? Mom said, getting up from the table. From the pantry, she took out a bowl with a cloth draped over the top. She pulled it back gently to give Alfie and Amelia a peek, but they could smell it before they even saw the fresh rising dough. What smelled better than that? Mom put it back and said, Zia and I will make it in the morning and bring it fresh to your school. No need to worry. Zia's going to help make it? Amelia asked, and Alfie could see that something good was whisking through her mind. Yes, of course, Mom said. Pizza is my specialty, Zia said. It's really amazing, Mom said. Simple, but full of flavor. As long as the tomatoes are from the hills of Mount Vesuvius, Amelia said. Very good, young lady, Zia Donatella said. Mom looked at Amelia and said, how do you know about that? You know, history lessons at school and stuff. Amelia said as if there was no big deal. We learned about the volcano and our teachers told us other stuff about the hills surrounding Naples. Maybe our kids really are Italian, Dad joked. Sometimes I feel like I barely remember Naples even though I grew up there, Mom said. Same here, Dad said. I have little flashes of memories like the old pasta factory and the wall down by the gulf, but not much else. Alfie thought he would burst at the mention of things he himself had seen and experienced, but Zia Donatella gave him a look that said he should play it cool. So as hard as it was, he did his best. We should all go together, he said. Visit Italy, hang out in Naples. You could show us where you grew up and where you used to get pizza, Amelia said. Alfie was positive that she was thinking of Tattoria Floriano. What if their parents had eaten there as children? They might know the Floriano brothers. Mom looked at dad across the table and said, you know what? We really should think about doing that. Dad smiled back and said, no reason why we shouldn't. Alfie and Amelia happily finished their gelato knowing that something magical was happening that evening. Something that had everything to do with food, Zia Donatella, and the simple act of eating together. All right, stay tuned for the last part. It is going to be the last chapter of this lovely book. We'll find out what happens and if their pizza is as magical as the pizza they ate in Naples. We'll also get to hear from the author, so stay tuned for the last part.